Hey, John Black, super chemist. Uh, we're making some fuming nitric acid today. This is not an instructional video. It's just a vlog telling you how I'm trying to learn chemistry. Um, please do not repeat anything in the video. If you do, do it at your own risk. Um, always remember you, uh, safety gear, um, a fume hood, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, glasses, goggles, and that. Uh, keep in mind, nitric acid, uh, especially fuming, um, will uh, react with a lot of gloves. You know, uh, like latex, I think, pretty much all of them, but uh, to uh, catch them on fire. Uh, so watch that. Don't wear those kind of gloves. Um, and don't get it on your hands. Uh, it's corrosive. The nitrogen oxide gases like NO and uh, NO2 and etc. are all poisonous, uh, terrible gases. And they're really tough to confine too. Somehow they always escape. Here's my apparatus. You can see in the bottom here, I have 101 grams of potassium nitrate set up for distillation. But first, you can see there up on the top where I got, I got an equalizing funnel with uh, sulfuric acid. I have another mole in there. There's a mole of the salt on the bottom and a mole of the sulfuric acid at the top. So 53 milliliters would be a mole of sulfuric acid. I put in 56 milliliters because I'm using cheap stuff, you know, from the hardware store. It's probably 95%, I'm guessing. I'm going to drip this in. I got my bubbler back there. See, this, when I start distilling it, got my ice bath comes down to the bubbler in the back. Then I have my two bottles filled up with sodium hydroxide and this last part here with the funnel is filled up with water. That should scrub anything out of there. I made this video a couple years ago uh, but my yield was like 50% or something like that maybe 55% I can't remember but it was very low. Uh, since then I've gotten the yield up to I think 93 percent um, but I'll go over that at the very end of the video I'll tag on an extra part saying what I did different and that's why I don't understand why they don't use the second uh, half some people say it's because it's it, you don't want to use the bisulfate because this is going to turn into bisulfate, the sulfuric acid. It's going to react once. It could react a second time, uh, and then it would be sulfate instead of bisulfate. Um, they say some people say it's because of the solubility, but really, uh, this stuff is. I, I must. Start, I put a stir bar in there, but it's useless because it's not going to stir. It's basically going to be wet solid in there. So I mean, nothing's going to dissolve really. I'm just going to drip that in slow because I don't want a whole bunch of nitrogen oxides being spewed out. That makes my yield less too. Plus, it's uh, no you don't want the nasty gases. Now remember, do not use a Vigorex column on this. You're just distilling out the uh, nitric acid. Just do a simple distillation. And as you can see, I got my heating mantle on there. And up on top, I got the thermometer. Now I'm just going to distill this at 83 degrees. And when it's done being 80, well, I'll let it go up to 85 maybe. And then I'll be done. But the distillation is starting to boil now. You will get some uh, nitrogen oxides, like nitrogen dioxide, you can see. Usually when that... Uh, once you start distilling, you know, a few minutes after that, it should subside. As you can see, it starts to clear up after it starts distilling. But before then, here I'm going to show you a before shot because uh, it's all filled up. Look at that. Even over by the receiving flask, all that's just filled with gas. 
Now you can see it starting to lighten up. That's just the beginning of the distillation. As you can see, I don't even have anything in the receiving flask, but it's starting to drip. That's all I got right there. It's about 20 milliliters, 21 milliliters, let's say. That's like a 50% uh, yield, so that sucks. But I don't really need it to be fuming, so I'm going to take it all the way up to 120 uh, 0.5 degrees Celsius and see what I get there. Now this is where it's done. That gas just escapes no matter what. I mean, you just cannot get that gas out of there. It's almost impossible. But uh, I would not do this unless I was in a fume hood or had something, you know what I mean? Even with the bubbler. And uh, it just doesn't help this gas. I don't know what the deal was with this gas. Alright, here's my stoichiometry. As you can see, sulfuric acid, one mole is 53 milliliters. I've probably got 95% pure. So I'm going to need 56 milliliters to be one mole. Uh, the potassium nitrate, one mole is 101 grams. So I'm going to use one, I use 101 grams. Now my theoretical yield, one mole of nitric acid. It's 42 milliliters, so we'll see what we get. All right, here's a couple things you should know. Um, making most acids, well, not all, but a lot of acids, um, basically you can just get sulfuric acid concentrated and drip it on the salt of the next acid that you want. For example, if I drip it on uh, sodium chloride, I get hydrogen chloride. I drip it on sodium bromide i get hydrogen bromide i drip it on sodium acetate i get acetic acid now what i'm making is nitric acid uh, so i'm going to put it on potassium nitrate because it's easy to get and uh, this turns into bisulfate which is an acid um, but it's not good to uh, take that acid and because you can do this again you know what i mean make this react with this and make that uh, but it's not a good idea i'm not sure why maybe it's because of solubility you'll be making too much potassium sulfate which isn't as soluble uh, or maybe i don't know but anyways uh that's what we're doing uh here's some some uh vocabulary here concentrated nitric acid is 68 percent uh, boils at 120.5 Celsius, all right? Now, I want to make, I mean, if I'm going to make something, I'm going to make it concentrated. I can always dilute it later. I can't concentrate it later. Uh, so I want it as concentrated as I can. Um, now, if you have greater than 86%, that's called fuming nitric acid. And then they break that down to two other types of fuming uh, acid. If you get up high enough, um, if it's at 86%, it's red fuming as long as it has 13% dinitrogen tetraoxide and uh, no more than 1% to 2% water. But if you get up to 98%, almost a uh, all you know, almost anhydride, uh, max of 0.5% uh, nitrogen dioxide and the rest, uh, you know, no more than that is in water. And that's called white fuming nitric acid and that boils at 83 degrees celsius so that's better than these two uh, now as you can see the difference between red fuming nitric acid and white fuming nitric acid has nothing to do with the water content in each case you have two percent water okay and uh, the rest is all nitric acid when it comes to white fuming acid but the red fuming acid has the impurity of uh, nitric oxide gases in there. 
like NO and NO2. Um, if you want to get rid of those um, and make sure that you know you have 98%, uh, you could uh, put a vacuum on the on the acid and just suck out the you know the brown gas until you have a nice clear liquid, uh, and then you know for a fact you have fuming white nitric acid. Uh, we made probably red nitric acid. Uh, because it isn't 98%, it's probably, you know, it could be 98%. I really don't know. But I'm guessing there's, it absorbs a lot of the NO gas that goes through there. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, it's probably a little bit below 98. But you could, uh, like I said, suck out the gases and uh, you'll have 98 for sure. Um, but it's definitely above 86 because that's where red nitric acid begins at. Um, I'm guessing it's pretty close to 98, though, you know what I mean? Because uh, even a little bit of, of NO gas, and it could be even 98, because even a little bit of gas, you know, gives it a tint to color, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so basically, uh, what we did was we dripped this onto this, and then we distilled it we heated it up to 83 degrees celsius and distilled it out so like i said i this is an old video and since i made it a couple years ago i you know i do it different now <clears throat> get a better yield uh like in a couple of my uh videos i improved the you know the terrible yields on some of them anyways uh, what i did different you'll see this is the equation the formula um, that's what I used in the video now what I what do I use now okay see the difference I added a one and a half here instead of one mole to one mole and one to one ratio I used a one and a half mole to a one mole one and a half to one ratio okay I upped the acid by you know every time I put a mole in I put a half you know whatever I put in I in the video, let's say I put 56 milliliters in the video, I would put 56 plus half of 56. Another thing I do different is uh, basically I set up like a distillation, right? Use the Vigorex because uh, I'm going to add more of this acid, so I really want to separate it, right? But I don't put on this part, the uh, pot. All right, I have everything set up. Now I have my pot in my hand, you know, my round bottom flask. I throw in the acid and the uh, salt, you know, both of these. Um, I actually put the liquid in first, although, I mean, the uh, salt in first and put the acid over it. A better idea might be to put the acid in first and then the salt. So the salt has to travel through the acid. It will definitely react instead of putting it in first, the salt, and then you put the liquid on and it doesn't really go all the way down to the bottom. Although I don't think it'll really make a difference in the long run because you're going to distill this. The boiling is going to shake everything up, you know, push everything around, and uh, it shouldn't really matter. Um, but anyways, like I said, I put these in the round bottle flask, and then I just quickly attach it to my already made apparatus, right? On and uh, start distilling because I have the extra uh, sulfuric acid. It really makes a big difference on the yield. Uh, like I said, I took it from a 50% or whatever my yield was in, in this video, doing it this way with the one and a half, all the way up to a 93%. All right. Always remember, science is great.